What I have here is an interesting little gadget you might be familiar with. Sometimes it's called a hand boiler, or for the more romantic among us, it's a passion meter. If I warm it in my hands, I show you that I am indeed a very passionate person. <laughs> am I really boiling that liquid? No, I'm just increasing the vapor pressure here, which is pushing the liquid up the straw, and the bubbles that you see coming through are like the bubbles you have come up through a straw when you're done drinking through a, through a cup. Not boiling, but still a nice demonstration, and reusable, I can push it back down. But the demonstration I'm about to show you uses this piece of equipment in a very, very different way. And I have to give credit to my daughter, Jenna, my oldest daughter, Jenna, for this. She discovered it completely by accident. A friend of mine had given her a hand boiler like this for a birthday present when she was, I'm thinking, five, six years old. And she had put it on her, book, on her bookshelf. And at some point, it had fallen off the bookshelf. Now, they're very fragile, but she had carpet, so it fell behind there and landed on its side by a heat vent. Well, months went by. She didn't clean up her room that often, go figure. And uh, <laughs> the next time she did clean up her room, she noticed something that if she hadn't noticed it, if she just picked it up and put it back, this demonstration would not exist. I can tell you that straight out because that wouldn't have occurred to me. But she noticed something rather unusual. And she brought it down and says, Dad, what's going on with this? In the one side was, they come in different colors, I think it was a blue one, a nice dark blue. But in the other side, there was clear liquid. The system hadn't been cracked or anything, and how could clear liquid have gotten in there? And I went to thinking, well, this is not a pure substance. It's some dye dissolved in liquid, but how do they get separated? I asked her to show me where it had fallen, and she showed me. A, hmm, the heat was on the side that was dark, and the other side had been relatively cool to it. So we right away set to work on this. Now, this is rather unusual. To do this, you're actually going to try to completely empty what's called the top portion of this. And I can do that like this, heating it up, kind of getting all the stuff I can out of there. And even this little, there's a little tip here. You can maybe focus on that that seems to capture a little bit of the, the liquid. So you can kind of tap that a bit, and it empties out. OK. And again, I'm going to try to. You try to get everything you can out. OK. OK, it's not perfect. There's still a little bit left in there. Let me see. Takes a little setup there. OK, that'll have to do. Um, now, the first little bit I can tell you is going to come through a little bit color because there's still whoop, a little bit in there. OK. And now I'm going to warm this up with my hand, and I'm going to plunge the other end into this ice water. OK, that's all that is. And I'm swirling it around. And almost instantly, up here where I'm feeling it gets cold, almost too cold to hold on to. What's going on? Well, I'm essentially doing a little distillation right here. Here's my condensing tube in the cold ice water. Here's my heating chamber. I'm not boiling it, but you don't have to boil something to distill it. That's important to point out. Distillation can take place anytime you have any vapor coming off, and you can condense somewhere else. So I'm causing the evaporation here and the condensation down here. Now you're saying that's not clear, right, because there was a little bit. So I'm going to actually do a little backwashing of this. It certainly is clearer than what was there before. And push that back down. This is just because I'm a perfectionist in terms of wanting to get that to be as nice and colorless as possible. OK? And now I'll do it. And again, the instant I plunge it in there, this hand starts to feel cold. This takes a while. To do what? To separate it completely. It hadn't been separated completely on her floor as it's at. They were just about half and half. But using ice water here and my warm hand here. And by the way, the skin temperature starts to drop. So what you want to do, seriously, is change hands every once in a while and then warm this hand up or pass it on to the next student. OK? What I think is most remarkable, if I take it out, warm it up like this, and then stick it back in, how quickly 
right away I feel extra cold, extra endothermic process going on there. It's not being transmitted. <laughs> we talk about conducting heat, I guess conducting cold. The coldness is not being conducted through the glass, if you'll allow me that. Not at all. In fact, I wish I had one of these where this little connecting tube was like 50 feet long. We could stick this in the ice water in one room, and in the other room, a person in all this would, again, instantly feel the cold. It's not going through the glass. It's because we have condensing going on here, which decreases the vapor pressure, which allows more evaporation to take place here. Evaporation being an endothermic process is taking the heat away from my hands. So, again, right there, it's instantly cold. And if I add salt to this, to make this not just a zero degree Celsius ice bath, but maybe a negative 10, negative 15 degrees Celsius, I mean, this actually gets painful to hold on to. But the glass in between, no. This, is, this glass feels like room temperature. Glass is a very poor conductor of heat. <laughs> so I guess that makes it a poor conductor of cold, too. Okay. In the two or three minutes I've been talking, I've managed to distill across... I'm going to say about maybe 15, 20 percent of it there. See the nice clear liquid down there? This is kind of what my daughter showed me. To save on time, I have one here that was done for about maybe 20 minutes, okay, and stopped. And then this one that shows the complete separation. Notice there's this blue dye caked on up here, and here a nice clear liquid. I think it's methylene chloride, although I think they, it's different in different, uh, in different uh, hand boilers. Now, how do you get it back again? <laughs> That's easy. The neatest thing is, I mean, stop and think about it before I actually put it back to you. What I managed to do, this sealed glass container had a mixture of molecules, and without actually reaching in there in any way, I've managed to completely separate the molecules from each other all the dye molecules here, all the solvent molecules here. I mean, that in itself is, a, is really remarkable, I think. So, anyway, I'm just going to go like this, put the clear back, and, I mean, obviously it's reusable an infinite number of times. So, meant to be used as a hand boiler, passion meter, but what I think is much more remarkable is how you can use the exact same piece of equipment to show a little closed system distillation. Thank you.